Hi guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be talking a lot because there is a lot to talk about. So I've been waiting to film this video for y'all for so long. At first, I was thinking about filming this video when I hit 500 subscribers, but then I really thought about it and I changed my mind because I feel like I really want you guys to connect with me in a deeper level and get to know me a little bit more than what I've been putting out in my videos. I wanted to feel more personal and more connected with you guys in a way so I decided to film today's video. Especially for all my 369 subscribers, y'all are truly so amazing. I cannot thank you guys enough for all your support. And I know 369 subs isn't a big number, but to me, it's honestly a really big deal because when you really think about it, that is 369 people that are supporting you, that are watching your videos. And for that, that means so much to me. So thank y'all so much. Another thing I wanted to film today's video is because, you know, in the month of May, it's actually Asian Pacific Heritage Month. And in the spirit of that, I just feel like it would be appropriate and very timely to film this video. So here I am. I am not gonna lie. I am pretty nervous to film this video. I don't know if you guys can tell because the stuff I'm about to share with you guys it's pretty personal and sensitive um, to me and this stuff I don't really just share with anyone except the people that knows me personally or that are super close to me other than that I was not ready to share it with anyone so the reason why I'm a bit nervous to film today's video is because this video is going to be shared in public which means anyone can see it and I was never ready to film this video to talk about this part of my life not to mention to share it with the whole world and second sharing something that is so personal and sensitive to us can be hard because doing that you have to be vulnerable and being vulnerable can be really hard when you put yourself out there you share your story sometimes it can make you feel like People might laugh at you, criticize you, even makes you feel like in some way it will ruin your reputations that you already have. But I really gave myself some time to think about it and I thought to myself, why should I care about what other people think of me? They don't know me, they don't know my life. And I'm doing this for people that care about me and I'm doing it for people that might have the similar stories as me and inspire people to tell their own stories. You know, we all been through shit in the past. We shouldn't let our past define who we are today except to help us learn and become better person. Sometimes it's good to be vulnerable and to tell your story, to just let all that feeling and all the things that you've been through in the past out because it makes you feel like you can move forward in a way and that's what I wanted to do and it is pretty nerve-wracking. Like earlier I was thinking about filming this video and then I was just so emotional because i was just so nervous to film to tell my story to share it online i need to face my fear and just do what i need to do and i think this video would really help me become more connected with you guys and more comfortable in a way so yeah so without further ado i'm just gonna dive right into it So first, I'm going to tell you guys a little story about my childhood. I was born in China, Guiyang, the capital of Guizhou province. I remember growing up in a city and then I had to move to a rural area later on. But um, you guys don't know why I had to move in a little bit. I grew up with my grandparents. Um, my grandma's name was Shun Kelan. My grandpa's name was Zhang Xingfa. Mind you, they were not my biological grandparents, but they raised me and loved me like I was their biological grandkid. They even named me Zhang Niu Niu. That was my name in China. And my last name was obviously my grandpa's last name. So they raised me till I was about six or seven years old. 
and the story that they told me about where I came from was that they found me outside of hospital when I was just a newborn and they didn't know what to do I guess and they didn't have their own grandkids so I guess they just took me in and raised me as their own. I don't know how that's possible that they could found a baby and just took it home without taking me to the police station and stuff like that. I mean, I didn't know, so don't ask me about that part of the story because I have no idea how how that was possible. But they did raise me and they were not my biological grandparents. I could have called them mom and dad, but they were older and they asked me to call them grandparents, so that's what I did while growing up. I don't really remember what my grandpa did for work. I just remember my grandma was either a doctor or a nurse because I remember she used to work at a hospital. I remember clearly she knows everything. She did so much for me. I literally had the most amazing childhood when I was growing up with them. I remember she used to take me to temples aka the Buddhist church. I used to believe in Buddhism because that's what she believed in and she used to do my hair. She used to dress me up so cute. Just always taking me places and I remember when I get sick I don't even have to go to the hospital. I don't really have to go to doctor's office or anything like that. She would just take care of me at home. So yeah that's my grandma and my grandpa, I honestly don't remember he did anything for me except he was always there to hang out with me, to play with me. I forgot to mention that I do not know who my biological parents are. I hope one day I could find them, but in a way that I don't know if I want to, it's, it's yeah. So after a while, um, my little happy life turned to a nightmare. I believe when I turned six or about six something, that's when my grandma passed away. So she started getting really sick and she got Alzheimer's and she couldn't remember me at times. I was really sad and confused, especially at a young age because she was my best friend. She was somebody, she was like a mother figure to me and whenever she couldn't take care of herself anymore she wouldn't rem she couldn't remember me it was just like so confusing to me and not long after that um she got cancer too and she just passed away and i remember i was the one that found her when she passed away i remember this day like so clear like it was yesterday i remember i got home from school. My school wasn't that far from my house, so I just walked home from school at, like every day. And I remember opening the door, my grandma was just like on the floor. She wasn't moving because when she got sick, I would always go home and try to take care of her. And her hands were like this, like in a way that she was trying to get up. And another thing I would never forget was she like pooped herself. I didn't know what that was at that time, but I guess when you die, you your muscles like gets loose and you just poop. But that was the scene and for a young child to find their grandma, their the person that raised them that passed away, it was like really traumatic. Later on I Yes, I accepted and my grandma is not going to be there anymore and I just had to grow up really fast and take care of myself, especially my grandpa was just not emotionally there for me. He was always gambling and I remember I would always have to run to all these spots to go find him to ask him for money for food. He was just not able to take care of me and then I guess the decision was made that he had to send me to an orphanage. That is why I was telling you all earlier I had to move from a city area to a rural area. When I got to the orphanage, it was just like crazy and very emotional because my grandpa had to explain to me that he has to leave me there. He can't be there with me and he told me that he was going to come get me. He told me not to go with anyone if they want to take me, like adopt me. He just told me not to go with anyone other than him. This is the time that I'm going to tell you guys my life in the orphanage. So 
the first night I remember clearly I was very sad and everything was so strange and just not how I imagined the orphanage was gonna be. The first night it was scary to me. I was missing my grandpa, I was missing my grandma. Everything I used to have, you know, I was the only child to, there was like a hundred kids and we were living in dorm rooms and I was placed with two people in one dorm room and I remember that night when I first got there it was so freaking scary because there are older kids at the orphanage obviously and there were also younger kids at the orphanage and I was considered like super young and I remember uh, this older kid came in to our dorm room was like asking if somebody had stole her shampoo and those two girls I was living to one of them she was deaf so she wasn't like saying anything and one of them it was like a little girl she's probably like a year older than me and they were just like saying that she did it or something like that I remember that like so clearly the older kids made the little kid whole like bite down a rubber band she was saying like do not let go and she literally like took the rubber band like so far just like let go of the rubber band and the rubber band just like smacked her mouth like so hard she just started like crying and screaming i was so freaking scared like i was <laughs> i don't know i was in so much shock and so much like fear and i was so scared like what is this place like why is these people are so so violent and um i guess like she saw the older kids saw that I was scared and then she like took me to her dorm room and then for some reason like she became like an older sister to me she like started protecting me from all the other people in the orphanage all the other kids in the orphanage let me explain so in the orphanage there are like cliques there are groups like gangs in a way so i was in her gang so she had to protect me there's also other gangs that the people were like the older kid that are protecting those people but whenever you're in like a little clique a little gang you have to do everything that the older kids want you to do in order for them to protect you so it was like crazy in the orphanage and there are just so many so many stories um i can't really think of it right now on the top of my head i also have a couple friends that are adopted that used to live with me in the orphanage that are also adopted to america and i still talk to them to this day i'm pretty sure they have their stories that they been through they, they they have experienced in the orphanage and i hope one day we can all meet up and sit down and like make a whole video about our life in the orphanage but for the sake of this video i don't want to go too much in detail so yeah that was a little story of my first night at the orphanage so one thing i do want to add is that as much as I made the orphanage sound like it's like a scary and terrible place, but it's not like that all the time. I did have fun and I got to learn a lot of skills. I get to have the privilege to learn how to play the piano, how to play the drum, I got to put in dance classes and stuff like that. So I am very grateful of that. All right, so let me move on to how I came to America. There were so many family that want to adopt me, and but like I said, I promised my grandpa that I will not go with anybody else except him. The first couple years, he would come like twice. He would come a couple times a year to visit me, to take me somewhere to eat and then bring me back home. But then as years goes and he just came less and less, and then one day he just stopped coming. And I remember the people at the orphanage, the teachers and nannies at the orphanage used to just tell me, your grandpa probably passed away there's no point for you to wait for him to bring you home because he's he's never going to after my grandpa uh, stopped coming i just realized that i really wanted a family i wanted to have a home i wanted to experience the life that i used to have with my grandparents and i wanted to feel love like it was just so hard I remember I would pray and pray, wish that I would find a family, and then one day, boom, somebody from America wanted to adopt me. So I got adopted and I came to America. The first two years was great. It was how I imagined a family was supposed to be like. You know, I was living in a big family environment with tons of kids, and then now I am adopted into a small family with just me and my sister that they had previously adopted as well from China. And after two years passed, I guess that's when everything started to go downhill. 
Um, I think it all started because me and my adopted mom, we were just always bumping heads. We never really got along, ever. And I guess that has to do with when they adopted me, I was a little bit older and I've already developed my own habits and my own beliefs. So it was really hard for her to mold me into what she wanted me to be. So I pretty much just didn't really agree with a lot of things that she wanted me to do. Or It's not that I was rebellious or anything. It was just like in a way that I couldn't be who I want to be or who I truly am. I'm not here to call anybody out or to talk shit because that's not what this video is all about. But I would say that when I was living with them, everything was just super toxic for me. It made me feel like stuck and trapped. I couldn't be who I truly am and I always have to put myself down in order to please everyone to the point that I completely stopped loving myself. I didn't even recognize who I was at that point. I was emotionally drained and mentally exhausted. It was just not a healthy environment for me to grow up in. And also I was just so scared because I felt like I had nobody to talk to at home. I had nobody to vent to, to go to. And for me to come into a new country and not knowing the language, not knowing the country, not knowing a lot of people and feeling all those feelings I was feeling, I was scared and alone. It was a tough, it was a really tough time in my life. Then that's when I started talking to my friends at school. At least that made me feel a lot more relieved and better. Personally, in order for me to heal and to feel better, I have to talk to people. So after all these years of venting to my friends and talking to my friends about what happened at home, one of my really close friends, I call her my sister now, she took the matter into her own hands. She talked to her parents about my situation at home. She somehow convinced them to take me in and they did and then after she told me that they are willing to take me in I was so excited as soon as I turned 18 I moved in with her and her family and ever since I moved in they treated me like I was one of their daughters and they let me be who I want to be they accepted who I am my life just gotten better and better after that and they're the reason why I got to meet the love of my life, Darian. Um, it's a funny story, but basically her sister is married to Darian's brother. They were always trying to introduce me to him or introduce him to me. So that is how we met. Now we are having a baby together. It's just so crazy how life happens. It's like my life it's never been better. I am a big believer in everything happens for a reason. and. A big belief in fate and I truly believe that whatever happened in my past has definitely brought me to where I am today just to think back to my past I feel like if that didn't happen I would have never got to where I am today so I am really grateful for what I have experienced in the past all the traumas I have experienced because all that brought me here if I have to go back and relive all that again just to be where I am today, I would do it. Despite of what happened with my adopted family, I am still really thankful of them for adopting me and bringing me to America. But unfortunately, they are not meant to be in my life for the long run, which it is what it is because it's life. Some people are meant to be in your life forever and some people only meant to be in your life temporarily and that is just how this life works but with what I've experienced in my life I've learned that at the end of the day we have to choose what makes us happy and if that means to let go of some people that's been in your life for a long long time in order to make you happy then we need to do exactly that because you cannot love anyone else before you love yourself first but yeah guys this is all for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed listening 
and I thank you guys for listening to the end. That means a lot to me. I want you guys to know that everything do happens for a reason. Either that is bad or good. You just have to trust the process, trust God, trust the universe because at the end everything will work out. Alright guys, so this is all. I've talked a lot today and if you guys have any questions, y'all are welcome to comment down below. I will try to answer everything that I can. And if you enjoy this video, please don't forget to give me the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Also, happy Asian Pacific Heritage Month, guys. Love y'all and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.